questions I get most often is, are supplements worth it? On the one hand, we have the nutraceutical industry that is booming and worth more than 350 billion dollars. And on the other hand, we have some health professionals saying that supplements do nothing more than make expensive we. So in this video, we're going to break it down so you know the truth. And we're also going to look at five common supplements and discuss whether they're worth it for your skin health. So a quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona and I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel, we talk about nutritional skincare, which is the concept that the food that you eat can be an easy and effective part of your skincare routine. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to make sure you're the first to get all the latest science back tips. Right, so let's get into this. Do supplements work? The short answer is yes supplements work. If they didn't, we wouldn't have national health bodies recommending that pregnant women take folic acid or that vegans take vitamin B12 or that we all take vitamin D. There's a lot of gold standard research to show that the right supplement in the right person can do a lot of good. So why do some people say that they don't work? What I just said was that the right supplement in the right person can do a lot of good. And that's the thing about supplements. They are not a one size fits all approach. So let's look at some of the factors that might fuel some of the supplement naysayers. Number one, you need to match the right supplement to the right person. So even though a supplement like collagen is super popular right now, it doesn't mean that it's the best supplement for you. Getting the wrong supplement is kind of like buying a hearing aid when really what you needed was glasses. Of course you're going to feel like it doesn't work. Number two, the dose matters. So supplements have been proven to work at certain doses and these doses are often a lot higher than you think. Now again, you wouldn't just drink one glass of water a day and say that it doesn't work for hydration. You accept that you have to drink much more to achieve the desired effect. And thirdly, quality matters. Now it is true that the supplement world is a little bit like the Wild West and there are lots of cowboys out there. A good litmus test is to check whether the supplement you're looking at is third party tested and they will usually shout about that on the label if it is. That means that the company are so confident in the formulation's quality and effectiveness that they will let an outsider analyze it. And lastly, the clue is in the name. Supplements should only ever supplement good dietary and lifestyle habits. They are not a band-aid, they are the cherry on top. So once you understand all of this, you realize two things. Firstly, the people who say that supplements make nothing more than expensive we don't really understand how they work. And secondly, you need to assess which supplements will work for you, and that is easier than it sounds. So with that in mind, let's look at some of the most popular supplements out there and assess whether they're really worth it for your skin health, which is what this channel is all about. Before we do, I have to remind you that this is general advice and it's not personalized to you. And if you're pregnant, if you're breastfeeding, or if you're on any medication at all, you must check in with your doctor before starting any new supplements. Right, so let's start with one of the most common, which is collagen. You've definitely heard of this because it is everywhere, but in case you haven't, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body. And in fact, you are made of about one third collagen and it helps to keep your skin looking lovely and plump and youthful. Now there is evidence to suggest that supplementing with collagen can help to boost skin's hydration and have an anti-aging effect. So let's look at our three areas, the person, the dose and the quality. The person. So collagen supplements are going to work best in women aged 35 plus and specifically women who are perimenopausal or menopausal or postmenopausal. And that is because during the menopause your body's own production of collagen plummets. So supplements Supplementing with it at that time is going to have the most dramatic effect. That means that if you're not a woman aged 35 plus, collagen supplements are not going to have such a noticeable effect on your skin. And dose. So the research back dose for collagen is two and a half to five grams a day, which is unusual in that it's actually probably less than you think. Two and a half to five grams a day equates to about a heaped teaspoon of the collagen powder. And quality. You want third party tested and you also want collagen that's best it's type 1 collagen peptides because that's the type that's most helpful to your skin. Now I think that marine collagen, which is collagen derived from 
fish slightly edges it for effect on skin but if beef collagen or bovine collagen is all you can get your hands on that's great too and just make sure that it's from a grass-fed source so collagen supplements for the right person they're worth it moving on to another common supplement which is the ubiquitous skin hair and nails formula there are lots of these on the market and they all contain slightly different blends but what they tend to have in common is that they contain a large amount of biotin now biotin is a B vitamin and it has weirdly good PR because although biotin is often touted as being great for your skin hair and nails there is actually very little evidence backing that up in fact unless you're deficient in biotin which is very rare in the developed world then supplementing with extra biotin isn't going to do that much for you now the other nutrients in a formulation like zinc or hyaluronic acid can have a good effect on your skin but they're usually in such small quantities in these formulations that they're not really going to move the needle with that in mind I don't think it's even worth talking about the person the dose and the quality I would argue that your average skin hair and nails formula supplement is not worth it right the next one is fish oil these are a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids which have an anti-inflammatory effect in your body now research on fish oil for skin health particularly is still developing but there's some interesting stuff out there so let's look at the person the dose and the quality now the person so fish oil might be helpful if you have an inflammatory skin condition like acne or eczema or psoriasis if you have normal skin and you're just looking for a boost fish oil isn't necessarily your best choice I would go for something like flaxseed oil or evening primrose oil which have been shown to enhance normal skin and dose now here's the thing about fish oil some of the doses used in clinical trials are crazy high we're talking like 10 grams a day which would be about 10 capsules every day for you to take that's probably too much for the average person at the very least for a therapeutic effect you want to be taking about three grams a day which typically equates to three capsules and quality so you really really want to care about the quality when it comes to fish oil you want it to come from wild caught sustainable sources of fish and you really want it to be third party tested because cheap fish oil can contain pollutants and other contaminants so fish oil if you have an inflammatory skin condition i would argue that it's worth it moving on to vitamin c now you probably have an awareness that vitamin c is good for your immune system but you might not know that vitamin c is critical for your body's own production of collagen now there is a study that shows that supplementing with vitamin C can boost your body's production of collagen but that study was looking at tendons and ligaments so it's less clear what effect vitamin C supplements would have on your skin's appearance and the thing is vitamin C is really easy to get in your diet you can hit the RDA for vitamin C from eating literally about half a cup of chopped up red bell pepper so if you're eating a range of fruits and vegetables which you should be doing anyway for your health then you're going to be getting a good amount of vitamin c for your skin and the nice thing is that when you eat whole food sources of vitamin c so lots of fruits and vegetables you also get lots of other phytonutrients that literally give you a natural glow and supplements don't tend to do that so i would argue that vitamin c supplements for skin health are not worth it eat your vitamin c instead and lastly let's talk about probiotics so these are little capsules of friendly bacteria and when you take them they support your gut health which has a positive knock-on effect on your skin now again research here is still very much in its infancy but there is some pretty promising stuff so let's look at the person the dose and the quality the person based on what we know so far probiotic supplements might be helpful if you have acne or eczema or if you're prone to sensitive skin and I would argue that if you also have gut symptoms like gas or bloating along with your skin symptoms, then that's another clue that a probiotic might be helpful for you. But the specific type or the specific strain of friendly bacteria matters. And this is what most people don't understand. Taking any old probiotic is like going to a shop and buying all the pairs of jeans rather than taking the time to find which pair of jeans is the best fit for you. There are a few really good evidence-based strains out there but for skin health there are two in particular that you want to look out for the first one is lactobacillus rhamnosus gg this has been shown to have a positive effect on acne and also in preventing eczema and it's also one of the most widely researched strains for gut health the second strain is lactobacillus paracasei st11 now this has been shown 
going to help rebuild the skin barrier, which means that it can be really good for sensitive skin and dose. So for probiotics, we used to think that more was always better, but thinking on that is now shifting. So somewhere between 10 and 30 billion colony forming units daily is enough to have an effect. And that can be anywhere between one and six capsules, depending on the brand that you choose. And quality. So believe it or not, whether you have to keep probiotics in the fridge or not is not necessarily a sign of quality. What is, is a company that lists its probiotic bacteria to strain level on the label. So flip over the pot and have a look, especially to see if you can find one of the two strains that I mentioned. And of course, make sure you get one that is third party tested too. So to sum up, supplements definitely do work and they are worth it, but you just need to find the best supplement for you. Now, I'd love to hear about your experience with supplements. Do you take any of the ones I've mentioned or are there other supplements that you swear by for your skin? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, you might like another video I've done on five anti-aging supplements that really work, which I will link here for you. I hope to see you there. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare.